the capital of the British Empire, their gaming's tarnished royal family looking to polish off the competition. It's the London Man! And from Sweden, it's the scrappy Scandinavian squad that loves to score. The Stockholm Magnetic! And now, please welcome Emma Griffiths! Welcome to the 2008 Championship Gaming Series World Qualifier. I'm Emma Griffiths coming to you from the impressive CGS Arena in Los Angeles, where the two remaining teams from the EU will fight for their very survival. The team that comes out on top will then go on to play the third place North American team for a place in the world finals. With stakes this high, the competition is going to be stiff. So let's meet the men who are going to be bringing us all the action. The UK's premier shoutcaster, Red Eye, and American gaming guru, DJ Wheat. Thanks very much, Emma. Yeah, I'm joined up here by the world class gaming commentator, Mr. DJ Wee. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm uh, excited for this matchup. Absolutely. And this is the last, last chance, chance for these, right two play, these two teams. They have to win this one if they're to go on to the World Finals. They still have one more hurdle to come after that as well. So tall order for both teams. Absolutely, Red. And of course, we're going to get started here. Let's take a look at the lineup for the London Mint. Now, the UK final was a harsh testing ground for the London Mint that revealed their strengths and weaknesses. Padman dominated in DOA, and their Forza team is strong as well. Possible weaknesses include the CS team and Strobe and Dead or Live. Well, we're going to see Strobe now. It's time for our first event. Take us ringside, Farouk. Live in the arena, it's Dead or Alive 4. For the London Mint, she's here to prove that Ruth hurts. It's Ruth. Strobe Harrison. And for the Stockholm Magnetic, she's the can't miss fighter who's about to kickstart her team. It's Sophie Miss Grace Hall. Dead or Alive 4 is an intense one on one mixed martial arts showdown in which competitors try to knock out their opponents using kicks punches, special moves, and counterattacks. Fighters also need to avoid the built-in dangers of the arenas where they battle, including passing cars, angry cheetahs, and exploding floors. If neither fighter has been knocked out by the end of the one-minute round, the fighter with the most health left wins. The first warrior to win five rounds wins the match, but every winning round counts as one point towards the team's match total. Now let's take a look at the characters they'll be playing with. Strobe is competing as Ayane, a devious diva with a good distance game. Ayane is extremely evasive, capable of spinning like a top and then crushing her foe completely. Miss is competing as La Mariposa, an advanced character who relies on rhythmic mix-ups and crippling throws while making ingenious use of walls and her environment to evade her opponents. London, are you ready? Stop, oh. are you ready? Ready, set, fight! Red Eye, both of these players in the finals lost to their opponents 5-0, have yet to really put any true rounds up on the board, but yeah, one of these on. players is gonna win. And absolutely. We're, we're starting. What's that? I yeah, know, I'm saying absolutely right. I, yeah, it's interesting that they're both 5-0 after their first matches Let's in this go. tournament, and now they've got to bring it big. Yes, and we're seeing Stroll from the London Mint doing a great job starting off. A good counterattack by Miss, but it looks like oh. Stroll will be able to pull out round number one. Well played, well played. Well, great start from Strobe first round in. You heard Ben Woodward's scream of delight. I think he's very relieved to get that first round on the board. It's always important. This game is just as momentum-based as some of the other games we'll see later on. And, of course, in the UK finals that we saw, Ben didn't really have a good opportunity to come back after that first game. Starting off with this 0-5 loss is very difficult. So it, it looks like he's just trying to put whatever he can in this team because this is the last chance. But miss from Stockholm. Starting off with a great second round here. We're going to see Strobe now on the counterattack, and she may oh. be able to put it together right here. Amazing job by Strobe. 
You're playing brilliant, you're playing brilliant. Keep it up. So the score is 2-0 to London. Find out who comes out on top when we come back. Welcome back to the Championship Gaming Series World Final Qualifier. We're just minutes away from a top draw FIFA match between London's footballing sensation Chrissy B and Stockholm's tenacious gamer Istvan. But before that, let's check out the rest of the awesome action going on in our Dead or Alive match. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the big scoreboard. After two rounds, London Mint Strobe has a two-point lead over Stockholm. And we will now resume the match in the CGS Arena. Well, you have to say, round two should have gone the way of Miss. She had the advantage pretty much the whole way through that first half of the round. She had a good health advantage on her opponent as well. But Strobe never gave up. And that's what really sets apart a lot of the professional players in this league. You might be down and out, you might have just a sliver of health bar remaining, but you've still got to go for it all. And that is exactly what these two players are doing. Both players exchanging about equal damage until Strobe gets a nice counter with her character, but Miss coming right back, capitalizing off of a whiff and does a fantastic job putting together an attack with a throw. She could win her first round here, Red Eye. She's got Strobe in the danger zone. Both players avoid the car, and that may put Miss in a bad position. Oh! And Strobe comes Come back yet again. Come on. Well played. Brilliant. Brilliant. Look at the reaction of the London men. Even they were surprised. Strobe pulled it out in the final moments of that round. Incredible. Great round from Strobe. Now round number four. Miss knows that she must start her comeback, and she did a great job. About a five-hit combo finishes off with a throw at the end there, and Strobe is going to get in a few hits. She jumps away from Miss's attacks and goes for the counterattack, taking Miss down to about 50% of her bar, but Miss has her opponent up against the wall. One final hit. Can she close the round this time? She does. Yeah! That's it, Miss. That's one. Four more. Good what? job. Yeah, that was a good round of four to win as well. She needed to bring that one back because at 4-0 down, that would make it very tough. You heard Heaton, the GM in the background, said, bring me four more. Four more is all she's got to do. It's going to be tough, but we know that she's at least got the skills to be able to take the round. But Strobe starting things off. Earlier in this round, she had Miss up against the wall, but Miss seems to have no problem dishing out some damage. However, Strobe on the comeback, she only needs one more hit on Miss, but Miss is going to give it everything she's got. Maybe it's time for oh. Miss's turn for a Come back, but it's not. Wait, one more, one more, that's it. We got this. Red Eye four to one is the round score there. Looked like Miss might have a comeback round that time, but it fell a little short. Yeah, I think she should have really punished her opponent in that time. These two are playing a very aerial game in Dead or Alive. We don't always see that either, but these two characters well suited to that. Well, we're going to see both players going back and forth here in this round. What could be a game-winning round for Strobe, and Miss knows that. She's going to give it everything she got. Great job. Again, a lot of aerial techniques we're seeing by both these players. Strobe is going to come right back out, has her opponent up against the wall, gets a nice eight-hit combo. She's in point to possibly finish oh. this one, but Miss going to give it all. Both players in the danger zone, and Miss stays alive. Good. Real nice. Well, just when you think one of them has got the advantage and they're going to bring the win home for their team, the other one steps back up, and that's what this game is all about. He only needs one more miss, stays in it. She can continue to win those rounds. She can make this starting score a lot closer than, of course, London Mint would like it to be. A 4-1 to start, or 5-1 to start would have been phenomenal. But let's get back to the action here. Round number seven, as we see some crippling throws coming out by Miss Stroke, putting in her own little attacks and damage as she does another nice combo there. She's going to get some more hits there. We see a great duck by Miss. Oh. She goes for the low hit. It's countered by Strobe. Brilliant. Yes. You're the best. You're the best. Well, we've got one game down, four to go. The score is five to two in favor of the London Mint. A three-point game here for London. And of course, to put the score into perspective, here's a crash course and how the points add up. Here's how the CGS scoring system works. Every point by a player is added to the team's overall score, which is displayed at the bottom of the scoreboard. 
In FIFA 08, each goal is one point for a player's team. Any penalty shootout goals count as one point each. In Forza Motorsport 2, first place wins four points for the team, second place wins two points, and third place wins one point. In Dead or Alive 4, win a round, get a point. The first player to win five rounds wins the match, but the loser still earns a point for each round he wins. And in Counter-Strike Source, the winner of each round gets one point. The first team to win 10 rounds wins the match, but there are important points at stake as the remaining rounds are played out. The key is that every point in every game contributes to a team's match total. Live from the FIFA Arena, it's FIFA 08. For the London men, he's the football sensation who sets high goals for himself, Chris, Chrissy B. Ballard. And for the Stockholm Magnetic, he'll smoke you like a Swedish salmon, Jonas Hispan Salamance. FIFA 08 is a cutting-edge football game in which two competitors face off as their favourite national teams. Each match consists of two four-minute halves. The winner is the player with the most goals at the end of normal time, and every goal counts as one point towards the team's match total. Ties are settled in a penalty shootout, and these goals also count as one point towards the match total. London, are you ready? Stockholm, are you ready? Ready, set! So, another pairing of people who are looking for some redemption from their respective finals. Chrissy B against this man. I almost have this one as the potentially the final final rather than the world qualifier. But nevertheless, it's a great matchup. It'll be interesting to see how these two match up against each other, bearing in mind they probably know what they're going to do before they do it. Chrissy B, or excuse me, in the EU final, uh, in the UK final, Red, he had the uh, own goal scored against his team, and obviously that put him down a whole lot. I think, you know, based off of skill set of both of these players, we should see a remarkable matchup here. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. The uh, colors for you, Chrissy B, blue tops, white shorts, red socks, as Francis Van playing as Brazil, golden tops, blue shorts and White Sox. Chrissy B with an attack over them on the far side. This man able to cut that one out. He played as England in his respective final. So change of strip and a change of team for this one. Little ball over the top here for Ronaldinho. This fan in oh, on good, goal. Man. And goalkeeper has done well. This man playing it short to Diego. Oh, it's a, ooh, what a stinging shot into the near post. And the goalkeeper had to be smart again. He's forced another corner kick. A long searching ball to the back post will be picked up by the yeah, goalkeeper, so back. danger be able to be cleared here by Chrissy B. And I just want to dwell a little bit on the stats because you know Chrissy felt he was really hard done by against uh, uh, against Bazza in the UK final. He had one shot on goal, Bazza, and scored two goals. And if you think that sounds a bit weird, well, that's because the own goal counted as well. Chrissy B, on the other hand, scored one goal from seven attempts. And, you know, that's how football is sometimes. Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot of attempts are what's going to get you the goals, and already Isvan has started off. He's got at least two to three legitimate shots on goal, so if he can keep that up, obviously an offensive strategy, I'd expect him to see uh, goal first. And Chrissy B just had his first clear shot, uh, clear chance of the game with a header from six yards. It was a fairly soft one. Oh, and uh, <laughs> I don't think Isvan expected that ball to come to him quite then. <laughs> and had already decided to commit to the play, which is why he looked a little stupid in kicking the ball out for a goal kick. Chrissy B now on the far side with Ribery. That ball played off a Brazilian foot. Two minutes gone in this first half. Four minutes a half, remember? And no goals so far. After a good start for London Mint, they lead by five, two after the first game. And remember, every single point from every match counts towards the team's match total. They'll be looking for a couple more here in London, but Stockholm will be looking to try and take them back. Maluda here for Chrissy B. Deep towards the back post. There is a header back there. Oh. It's turned in. Oh. Oh. Goalkeeper not able to keep that one out. And it's Chrissy B who opens the scoring. With the man. With the man. Well played. Keep cool. Oh, here comes the replay. Deep cross. 
to the back post. We sometimes see the goalkeeper coming out for that one. Look at him, just ball watching in the end, and all he can do is parry the ball into his own neck. Yes. And Chrissy B. Come on, well played. Well, he starts out well with a goal. Good. You know, I spoke to him briefly just before this game started, and he said, I, I said, you know, are you are you just hoping for a bit of luck today? Because you really didn't have much luck in the UK final. And he said, no, I'm not looking for any luck. I'm just looking to not have any bad luck. <laughs> well, you know, and Istvan actually had three defenders around that striker for Chrissy B. So I, I would guess if I was the keeper, I would have been a little surprised who went through too. But uh, nice, nice job there by Chrissy B. An, an additional point for the London Mint. Indeed, which takes us to a 6-2 oh, overall. And that gives them a four-point advantage right now, which is a reasonably healthy start after two games. Remember, what these two teams are playing for is a chance, just a chance, to go on to the World Final. They've got another game after this game, even if they win this one against the third place North American home. team, who we won't just know just yet. But you know what? Both these teams really want to stay. They really want to have that chance and a crack at the world's best in the World Final. The elite eight teams from the Championship Gaming Series will make it. The winners of the wild card could be one of these two teams. Long way to go still. A little ball inside from Chrissy B is cleared away by his fan. Long searching ball forward for Ronaldinho. Robinho in midfield. Stumbled at first. Now he got a ball back. Little ball over the top. Goalkeeper comes. Played. Nice and calm. And Chrissy B calming things down. Playing with that assurance that we've seen him play within the past. He just really hasn't proved it on the championship gaming series stage in the past. We know how good he can be, but. Really needs a big result, might get one here. Long ball into the box at the back post was cleared away. And that's a long, long ball out, and the goalkeeper's wow. going to have to come oh. and get this one. It's rebounded off one of his own defenders, and fortunately, Chrissy B is able to bring it under control, but danger oh, there, Chris. DJ Wheat. And danger again here, no, cleared away. 21 seconds of this half remains. Great skill by Chrissy B on the near touchline. He's got a chance to put this one in the box. Why well, dwelled on the ball a little too long? And in the end, that meant that he was able to be tackled. Slide tackle from Istvan is clean. They're a little risky sometimes. Can get your men sent off. We've seen that before. And now throw in for Chrissy B. Touchdown. Early ball to Maluda. Little ball inside. Omri about to shoot. Oh, well, cocked the trigger. Wasn't able to get a clean shot off. Chrissy B gets the ball back. We have time up now, and that's a clumsy challenge. I think that'll be a free kick to Istvan. Oh, no, well, it's popped out for a throw-in anyway, and it has gone the way of Stockholm, as they will now play the ball forward. Last few seconds of the half. Focus. Chance for Henri, he's got a gap here. Little ball over the top, is he offside? No, he stayed onside! Uh -oh. And it's wide. Wow. Really should have done better. With all the time in the world, carved open a brilliant opportunity. Oh! And Ben Woodward can't believe it either. Oh. Look at his team. So, again, final whistle. Finally, we get the whistle. Not the final whistle, but the half-time whistle. And it's 1-0 to Chrissy B. Magnetic right now. They're 6-2 down in the franchise match. And that man on your screen, Istvan, finds himself a goal down to Chrissy B in FIFA 08. Second half. And uh, your first half thoughts, DJ? Uh, you know, Isvan started off with a very aggressive nature to his play, and then Chrissy B sort of turned the tables on him a little bit. Um, I, I want to see Isvan really attack. Well, I think that's what he will be wanting to do in his second half. Want a lot of possession, try and get a few more shots in towards goal. He knows what he has to do. And, it, and as I said at the top of this game, you know, these players both know each other's game very right, well. So right. it's, it's always going to be difficult for them to outsmart the other guy. They'll know exactly where they're going on the pitch and why. And uh, one of those positions is just outside the box. Isfan well, really likes those shots, but Chrissy B knows that's what he's got to try and shut down. Now, chance here. Onside. Omri for Chrissy B. He's oh, played his side. Oh, wow. misses by a millimetre. Wow. Desperately unlucky. Unlucky, Chris. Uh, I just want to comment that GM of Stockholm had the biggest smile on his face and that did not go in. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> They've beaten the offside trap somehow and a brilliant piece of play by Chrissy B. Found his other striker alongside him, passed the ball off to him and that ball was, as we say in the industry, pixels wide. 
One nil it remains. And this fan, I think, I, he, he can count his chickens because he was very, <laughs> very lucky to get away with that one. Minute gone. Chrissy B now coming through the midfield. Just a little stub ball there by his fan who's tried that. That's the shot I was on about, DJ Week. Yeah. That's the one. That little shot from just outside the box, curling into the top corner. This man is very hard. Chrissy B aware this time round. Streaming forward. He's got three, four in the midfield Ooh. right now. And, uh, well, referee hasn't called us back for that one, so I guess that was a clean challenge. But uh, I've seen cleaner things on the back of my fridge at home <laughs> than that tackle. But nevertheless, he's got away with it. Chrissy B now down on the far touchline. He's got a man ahead of him here in some space. One man just inside his Henry. It's Henri, and he's got a man at the back post, which I think is a nail cut. Ball didn't end up coming in in the end. And Chrissy B squanders another chance. Might get another one now. Evra. Henri waiting again. And now at the back post. Great work by Chrissy B into the box. Dribbled that ball through. He does like to dribble this. Anelka, near touchline, searching ball for Henri. Does manage to pick up wow. that ball as well, and Chrissy B now can break. Hasn't got any support, he's going to have to go in alone! Oh, and wow. will do so! Yes. Well, even if you didn't know which team was which, the faces tell the entire story of the game. Chrissy B strikes again, and it's 2-0 London Mid. Red, I'd just like to come out with a somewhat bold comment here, is, is that, you know, Chrissy B, he really didn't play as well as I think everyone expected to in the UK Finals, but how he's performed here in this matchup, you know, I've been watching a lot of the North America teams, and he looks like he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. 2-0, right, minute and 12 seconds to go. That was an offside against this fan. You'd have to fancy that the London Mint MVP has this one in the bag. I totally agree. And now, Canel, far side. Smuggled out by his fan. And actually, that came off one of his fans' players. So, Chrissy Beal going to throw in here deep in his own half. And that was a missed opportunity as well. But not only not quite as good as the one we saw him miss from a couple of millimetres away earlier on in the game. He's not going to rue that now, I don't think. Chance here for his fan to put the cross into the box. It's very deep, and it's played away by his fan. Long ball over the top. Henri's through yet again. Goalkeeper thought about coming. Is there a chip shot on here? No, not quite. And it's gone to another player on side. Chrissy B again! Wow. And he's forced the corner. But his fan's defence right now is being absolutely ripped apart. 38 seconds remaining of the half. Corner kick to London Mint. Chrissy B with a short corner. Men waiting, Everett to deliver. Plays it into the corner, checks back once more. A little back heel off the heels of Istvan's player. What is this to be? Looks like it could be a long throw into the box here. Two or three men waiting. It's a shorter ball this time. Good ball. Deep cross into the back post. And Nelka waiting! Oh! And the header is just a few millimetres over the bar. That's how close Ooh. it was wow. from going 3-0 up. Shake of the head from Istvan, and well, a shake of the head he might well do. I, I guess if you ask them how many times they've practiced, they would probably say 300, 400 matches, probably. And I'm not exaggerating, they will probably tell you they've won half as many each. <laughs> this time, the gods have fallen for Chrissy B. Eight seconds remaining now. Surely London are going to take oh. this one home, and given away now by Istvan. Terrible mistake, and it's allowed Ribery to... Oh, and there's a shove off the ball now. That's going to get a card, surely. Some frustration creeping in now. And the crowd boot, and rightly so. Time is now officially up at the end of the second half. Chrissy B, two. Istvan, nil. Ball just pops out for a throw, and that's not the end of regulating uh, regulation play just yet. Long throw by Chrissy B. Ball bounced back to the edge of the box. Play back out, Ribery. Great triangles here from Chrissy B. Into the box it'll go. Goalkeeper should get this one. Doesn't come. It comes back off the upright. Another header back, oh. and the goalkeeper will pick it up late. And Chrissy B has had so many chances in this. Oh Two nil doesn't seem fair. Good job. Good job.
Well, that's a great victory for Chrissy B. It's also a great victory for London Mint. And that's why, because the big scoreboard right now shows that London Mint lead by 7 or 2. And there's still more to come. Up next, it's a nail-biting Counter-Strike Source showdown as the mighty London Mint take on the stalwart Stockholm Magnetic. So stick around. Welcome back to the World Qualifier. UK runners-up London Mint play Stockholm Magnetic for the last place in the World Finals and a shot at the $1 million prize pot. Gaming is truly an international sport, and that's why the Championship Gaming Series is a global gaming league. While the UK and EU gamers have been battling it out in their second season, drafts and competitions have been going on all over the world. And the team who wins the UK and EU finals will be going on to the CGS World Championships later in the series, when they'll take on the best teams from Europe, North America, Asia and Latin America in a battle for true world gaming domination. Until then, you can keep up with the status of all the regions at sky.com slash CGS. Welcome back to the CGS World Final Qualifier. The formidable London Mint and the Stockholm Magnetic are locked in battle and only the winner will survive to play again. The score is 7-2 to London. And now I think it's time we went into battle. Farouk, take us there. Live in the arena, it's Counter-Strike Source. From the UK, it's the squad of dashing Brits who always dress to kill the London Mint. And ready to send them packing, it's the Swedish soldiers of others' misfortune, the Stockholm Magnetic. Counter-Strike Source is a first-person shooter that pits two five-man teams against each other. A team of counter-terrorists versus a team of terrorists. Each round, the terrorist goal is to plant and detonate a bomb. The counter-terrorist goal is to defuse their bomb. Another effective way to win a round is for either team to eradicate all members of the opposite team. The game is split into two halves, consisting of nine rounds each, and each round lasts 80 seconds. At half-time, the terrorists and counter-terrorist teams switch roles. The first team to win 10 rounds wins the game, but every winning round counts as one point towards the team's match total. Let's take a look at the Counter-Strike Source lineups. First up, London Mint with Henry G, Huds G, Husey, not with a G, Rich and URL, led by their general manager, the brand new to the CGS this year, Ben Woodward. They go up against their opponents for the World Qualifier. Stockholm Magnetic lining up with Ferris, Giftig, Haz, Red and Sparkle, led of course by their legendary Counter-Strike player, and now GM and Mill Heaton Christensen. And here's the map they'll be playing on. Tuscan is an Italian village with a bomb site on either side of the counter-terrorist spawning zone. The sewer system evens the playing field by giving the terrorists underground access to one of the bomb sites. Because of the short distance between the bomb sites, the terrorists often fake an attack on one of them to keep the counter-terrorists guessing. London, are you ready? Yeah. Stockholm, are you ready? Ready, set, begin the match. So, they faced this position before, Stockholm Magnetic. An almost identical scoreline in their continental final with Berlin. They find themselves 7-2 down right now, knowing that Counter-Strike Source is a big swing game. There's 18 points up for grabs here, DJ Wheat. They need more than London Mint. It sounds simple, but it's not going to be. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be. And London will be starting on the attacking side. That's the terrorist side, as Stockholm will be on the defending side. So they're going to get a lot of rounds, or they should here, off of the bat. It should also be noted that this is a new map 
to the championship gaming series, so it's going to be interesting to see how well versed these players are. Yep, Thermos picking up the first two kills of the round to drop London down to four, uh, drop down to three men. Sorry, my maths are terrible. Stockholm, though, lost a man. Wow. Thanks to play. That was a fantastic shot from Ferris. Has pulled up one as well. And that'll leave just one more man standing here, which will be Hudds G, and he shut down Gifting, but Ferris comes in. They'll swarm all over the bomb site, and that'll be, well, a good plan from London, but a good winning round from Stockholm. Go back to the start of the round for London. Here's the uh, shot from Yarrow. That bomb site right now, just unleashing the grenade after it as well. So. Good defense inside that bomb site as they were about to plant, but couldn't hold on to the site. That was a nice job by the London Mint. They got in there, they got the bomb down. That's the first step in CS. If you can get that far, well, you just need to convert that plant into a round win. Looks like they might go the same way, Red, but as it's said here on Tuscan, you know, they could be working both sites. Yep, and you're going to see a lot of these sniper shots as well. Sparkle covering that middle area has already taken down Henry G. Yorel, you saw him, uh, he, he was actually moving up towards that area to try and cover them, but wasn't able to get the shot off, so he missed his. Sparkle landed his, Ferris lands some more of his own, and finally Mint get themselves back on the board with a frag from Juzy. Make that two, wow. Richard with another one. And suddenly it twists and turns from being advantage Stockholm to being advantage Mint. They have three men now, and Stockholm only have two, and Red has just evened them back up as I said that. Bomb is down, 25 seconds remaining now. Stockholm pushing in towards the bomb site. Husey locks that down though with a shot down and gifted. Terrible mistake from Rich though. He's down Husey with a grenade, and Red just might be able to get in here and clinch this one. Bomb is still ticking. Is this a defuse? It's oh. not a defuse. Rich will come in and pick it up. Nice, Rich. It's easy. Uh, as we see, there's the miss from Yarrow at the start of the round. He will try and pick it up, though. Red then comes back in on it and locks him down. Husey will pick up the revenge frag in the end. 1-1. One, if, one. if you're going to be defending that back uh, tunnel or in banana into B, you, you've got to be, make sure you're hitting those shots. If not, that ex is exactly what's going to happen to yep. you. Spark will punish them in the start of that round as well, which... Uh, it's why it was kind of surprising that they didn't manage to pick that up, but nevertheless, now we might see something a little bit different here from London. They've been pretty aggressive so far. Two plants out of two in the first two rounds. One worked, one didn't, but uh, it's like DJ Week said at the start of that first round, you've got to plant the bomb to start with as the T side to give yourself an advantage. Rich and Gifted exchange frags. As it's going to work up here on the kitty. I think there was two down there. Looking one, one from behind though. Henry G with a double, thanks to the grenade in on Gifting as well. Ferris was in there as well. He's made mincemeat of Henry G, and Ferris has now got to do some more work for Stockholm here because London are swarming all over this bomb site. That was a great attack there on A Red. You saw that two came up from the kitty ramp. That's the ramp on the left side, uh, while the other two came in from the sewers. It was beautifully coordinated. I heard. Wonderful music. Yeah, it, it's wonderful when you get Counter-Strike played like that because that is what teamwork's all about. When you get one player coming from one direction, another at the exact same time, that's where it really comes up. Now, another man's got to go big is Ferris, who won't be able to do so. It's 2-1 to London. Come on, boys! Rush me, rush me, rush me. You got the momentum. Calm down, Keep man. Keep it up. Please calm down. Yeah, there was a key point there. Ben said, you've got the momentum. And that's what this game is about. They've got two rounds now, two to one, and any round that London can get will certainly help out. And look at Ferris. He is 10 and 2 right now, Red. And <laughs> Three that, rounds in, he's yeah. 10 and 2. The rest of his team have four frags between them. Yeah. One apiece, I might add. And uh, Ferris again with the first kill. And another one at the start of the round. That's 12 and 3. And he seems to be the only one that can actually land any shots here on the mint. Great shot from URL with that. Uh, with that uh, Glock as he moved in towards that bomb site, there was a fantastic shot. Just looked like a burst fire shot. We'll have to check that one back, maybe. London with three. Stockholm with three. In terms of men right now, London leading by two to one. It's been a very good start for them on the offense side of this map. They've got another plant coming in here as well. And that's. They've done, they've done this every single round, DJ Wee, and Stockholm's defense seems to be really weak right now, but Reds may be answering up with this one. Two in there straight away, will clear them all out and pick up the final frag and get the defuse, but I'm astonished at how easily Mint are making it into these bomb sites. 
Jag hör inte dig. Prata, bra, prata, spelat. Prata. bra spelat. Prata nu. Nu kan du prata. När alla håller sig efter. Prata nu. Det du sa precis. Ja, prata, prata, prata på vänt. Stockholm actually, they, they were very dynamic in that round, Red Eye. What they did is, you know, London kept on attacking that B site over and over and over. And uh, what they did that time is that Red came in through the back and uh, that flank really helped out the, the Stockholm team. So 2-2 two -two in score. And then Stockholm get the defuse on that fourth round. And London, well, it's been pretty good so far. Four plants out of four. Aggressive rounds, gifted though this time is starting things off for Stockholm. And they just get a little bit worried there. Checking in through that smoke that you see on your screen. Here's Henry G, bomb strapped to his back. Has with another one, again they lose another man. Sparkling as well, Red with another one, and that's the bomb carrier down. There's a great grenade in from the last man standing as a way he gets it back with interest to Hughes it, but he will pick up the frag on Red. They exchange grenades, it was almost like they ate them with their teeth there as well, and Haz will lock it down with a final frag. And Stockholm just starting to get back into this one now. Uh, as we said, after four rounds, in fact, after three rounds, he had 12 kills. Hasn't, hasn't picked up any frags in that last round, but enormous job for that man that was just on your screen, Ferris. And many of those were, were opening frags. They so were. getting those opening kills, getting that extra man advantage has been really good. And one other thing I want to point out is that that S hallway that leads to the B bomb site is really being utilized here by London. And, you know, if Stockholm puts a good defensive uh, stance right there, it, it could really shut them down. But it's nice to see London you know, utilizing every aspect of this map. Now playing some very dynamic Counter-Strike here. It's a, a far cry from the mess that we saw from them in the UK final. I have no other way of explaining it. I mean, I don't think they do either. They were absolutely terrible in the UK final. Not the kind of standard they want to be playing at. But yet again, look at this. Sparkling with that shot, though. Did manage to pick up one. Hushji with the reply. They've got the bomb planted yet again. And they really have been very aggressive on this T side. It's been fantastic to watch. But Stockholm here trying to shut them down. Gifting and Ferris com combine to take down two. Fusey back in with one. They've got one more man to go. And that last man standing is Fusey. Now, he knows that there's a man by the bomb side. Great Beautiful. baiting. Brilliant baiting Beautiful. by Ferris. Fantastic play from Stockholm. And they'll take the lead by four to two. So, right now, as you can see on that big scoreboard, London lead by 9-6. to six. It's a shrinking advantage right now, with Magnetic putting four on the board on the CT side, the counter-terrorist side, in counter-strike source here on Tuscan. That final defense there by Stockholm, you know, that was textbook CS, Red Eye. You know, it was smart, it was intelligent, and they made sure that they were going to get the job done despite whatever the London Mint tried. You're absolutely right. I watched the uh, player move in. What he did was a uh, fake defuse. He then moved away from it to get the player to be flushed out. They flushed him out, and the other man was waiting for him. It was a brilliant bait. Rich, though, picks up the opening frag of round number seven. Nine for each half, remember? Gifting will make it 4v4. Henry G back in. Rich with another one. Mint suddenly find themselves with a two-man advantage. Sparkle will shut down URL. Bomb is about to go down yet again. And I have to say, I'm absolutely mystified why Stockholm are just letting them roll into each bomb site and get those get those bomb site uh, bombs fired. But I will get there a view from DJ Wheat about that in just a moment because they haven't been successful every round. It's 4-2 to Stockholm after all, so they seem to be comfortable allowing these guys to go in and plant. Right now, Haz looking for the bombsite. He's the last man standing. He's got a big job to do here. Starts off well with a frag on Hughesy. Found one. Can he find another one? No, he can't. Rich will get the frag. And London pull another one on the board. The next two. Next two. Need job. Job, 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 job. Job, 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 job. There's Hughesy on your screen right now. Seven frags so far this half. Having a good game alongside Rich. He's also seven as well. So those two leading the London Mint into battle with those three rounds they've picked up so far. And 4-3 is a reasonable score at seven rounds in. Yo, one thing, Red Eye, is maybe just their aggression and going in and getting the bomb down is once you get that bomb, you're automatically putting a new burden, a new task in front of the Stockholm team. And 
you know, they have no problem on this map getting into the sites that they need to get into. So I think it's a pretty smart strategy. Get in. It's okay if we lose a couple guys. Get the bomb down and then make Stockholm work for it. Wow. It's a stunning shot from you around just off your picture right there. It's, uh Fusey made his way in towards the bomb, so you can see the overview now. They've got one cover top, one cover behind. Bomb is planted now, now set themselves inside that bomb. And the stunning thing about this is, as Hubs G picks up that frag in on Ferris, is that they're actually almost baiting Stockholm to come and get the bomb yeah. every round. And yeah. they're doing it with four or five members alive, so it makes it a very even battle. Gifted, though, is trying to make it an uneven battle. Henry G through the floor, and London have tied it back up at 4-4. Four -four despite the brilliance of that man on your screen right now. Oh, yeah. 16 and 5 in the first half from Ferris alone. He's a one-man machine right now, and he's almost the reason they're at 4-4. This could have been a lot worse. Yeah, he, he's had some remarkable, remarkable opening kills in the rounds, and he's done a great job. And although Stockholm is only has four uh, rounds to London's four rounds, it's going to be interesting when we switch sides, Red Eye, will Stockholm keep up that same aggression and try to do the exact same, one, uh, the exact same thing London a couple from Mint, one return from Stockholm, 3v4. Again, the advantage is for London, and has, well, has a bridge on your screen right there. Been blind. Uh, I think he must have been blind from a flash coming in earlier than we saw. But here come the grenades raining down wow. on top of them. Henry G picks up one. Oh, they're getting the play oh, of each no, other. Come the on, great wow. cover That's brilliant. from Hudge G. That's brilliant. Keep and it London have picked up the it's first easy. half. So there's the end of the first half, then 5-4 in favour of London Mid. And that leads us back to our big scoreboard right now, which shows that we are at 12-6 to six in favour of London. That six-point gap is still theirs. DJ Wheat, now they've switched around. Stockholm will now be on the offensive. London will now have to set their sights on defence and shut this game down. So uh, some interesting boosts here as well in the middle. Well, I'll show them to you uh, as we move through this middle area with Stockholm right now. There's five of them in there, and London will be waiting to see which way they're going to come. Yeah, as uh, man with the UR, a man with the AWP is actually URL. He'll run away quickly wow. and somehow survives. Three men moving towards the bomb site. Ferris will shut him down, and then Ferris gets locked down himself by uh, Rich. Rich then returns the favour, and Red then returns that back to him. So one for one all the way through there, and 3v2 is the advantage that London Mint face the, now, 2v2. Sparker and Red combine though, Nicely and done. Stockholm have done exactly what DJ Week said, and matched the aggression. Run away. Come on, come on, come on. One nil. So in a round two then, of this second half. Five, five now overall score in the Counter-Strike source, and you know, London, well, they'll want to try and make sure they don't lose too many rounds this half and wrap up the Counter-Strike, keep their team ahead. Three games in, Dead or Alive 4 is up next as well for Mail. Panama waiting in the wings, along with Scat and Miller. Meanwhile, Rich is dishing out the dirt here with Susie combining. Gifting finally getting Stockholm back into the game. Rich wow. with another one, and Rich really going huge in this round for them. Finally, Red is the man that stops the nuisance as he moves in towards the bomb site. They're still waiting. Husey now in on red. There's the last man standing is Ferris. He's not standing anymore. Lay down, my friend, because London are going through to win that particular round. It's 1-1. One, one. Up next, the non-stop counter-strike action continues. Plus, London's loudmouth Padaman gives his gob a rest and lets his fist do the talking when he takes on Magnetic's fighting machine, Scatton Miller. So stick around. Let's have a look at the match summary, see how we got to where we are right now. First up, Strobe versus Miss. London looking to come out of the blocks big, and that's exactly what Strobe did. Miss also looking to rebound, wasn't able to get more than two rounds. 5-2 win for Strobe to get London underway. Then up, it's the battle of the two friends, the guys that practice and play together, Chrissy B and Isfan. It was Chrissy B quickly out of the blocks, and he added a second in the second half to solidify their lead. 7-2 after two. Counter-Strike Source up next, and so far, so good for London. That was uh, some good stuff from London. They uh, obviously pumped up. They want this one. They know how important these rounds are. They had a, a shocking display in the UK final against Birmingham. It take nothing away from Birmingham. They were very good. But London plays so much better, and they're starting to show us that against some of the finest that Europe have to offer in Counter-Strike Source right oh. now. As Ferris is one of those men. Sparkle one, two. They come through. And they have the man advantage now, need to make it pay this time round. 
as that bomb will get planted. Pressure now on. Two towards the bomb site. One is Henry G. He locks down Sparkle. Two to five. Gifting's another one, but Gifting wins that battle. And now they have a 3v1, and Red will easily win the round. And that'll put him ahead in this half. And yeah. time's back up at 6 6. You know, Stockholm in that last round, their flashes on B were really, really great. It, it allowed him to get a few kills there. In the round before, they had some good flashes, but not as effective as they were in that round. And that could ultimately, you know, change the tide of, of a round. And Stockholm has the momentum now. On the T side, they picked up one more round than London. If they keep up that aggressive bomb planting strategy, um, you know, they could still come out uh, with a decent point spread here. Reminder for you as well, in the biggest, biggest scene of things, they were 7-2 down. So they really do need every round on this T-side. It usually is wow. a little bit more difficult. Ferris in with the first kill of the round. In fact, the second kill of the round, my mistake, missed the first one. There's uh, another one from Gifty. Hughes here, no, URL though, again. URL, well, throw away the guns, my friend. You're better with the pistols. <laughs> Great shot from URL. And Reb was the man that went down. Now, grenade over the top. That's gone right in there as well. I think Gifting now is really hurt. It's 2v2. This one's anyone's round. URL moves wow. in. Has covers him on the back, though. Husey, last man standing. No, it's URL who's last man standing now. Husey was the man that got shot down by his friend, Has. URL picks up one. Can he pick up the second one now? Detonation is 15 seconds away. Nice. And no, Has locks it down. And that man on your screen right now, you're out. I'm jesting when I said he should just give up the guns and stick with the pistols, but that was a great shot. Fantastically done. And Stockholm did something a little bit different there, Red Eye. This time they went right up through the middle and they changed it up. One thing we didn't see the London Mint do, they either went left or right. And I, I'm pretty sure that caught the London Mint off guard. Yeah, I think it did. You're right. Um, we've seen the aggression from them as well in those first three rounds. We've seen it again here as Red picks up two quick frags. And that Kitty Rush is now something that they're going to get used to here because London Mint have been totally caught with their pants down again in this round. Gifted with a third. It's 5v2. They've got the bomb side locked down. And only Rich has offered any real resistance resistance with a kill in on a Ferris, has with a kill on Rich, and this one is going the way of Stockholm, no doubt about it. Sparkle finishes things off, straightforward round for Stockholm Magnetic. Looked like maybe the London Mint was lacking some money, I don't think they had quite the arsenal that uh, their opponents had. And uh, of course, money as you get kills and as you plant the bomb and, and do other activities, win rounds, you, you get money to buy better weapons. And in that case, they had simply ran out. And yeah. of course, they've got some now. Yeah, I hate to say it, but um, yeah, the game rewards you for being a good terrorist. You get more money for planting things and picking up the frag. So that's why Mint right now, who haven't been doing their job and are down by four to one, have lost out on their uh -oh. cash. They need uh, some sort of financial director in there to sort them out, I think. But this time around, they have got the weapons. Rich in with a brilliant grenade up right. the side. Fantastic from him. Ferris knocked down. And finally, London can stop that tide of wins going the way of Stockholm. 4-2. 7-8 overall. And 14-10. London leading still. But by just four points now. There was a smart round by the London Mint. You know, they got the opening kills, they did what they needed to do, they swarmed the rest of the Stockholm team, and uh, they got the rounds. Of course, uh, Stockholm, they pick up two more, they've got to win. London, on the other hand, they need the next three. They also need to keep it close, even if they lose this one. So, uh, when we say every round counts and every point counts, we really mean that, you know? <laughs> it's uh, something that you'll hear us say a lot, but never more so when you're down and out in Counter-Strike. Is it really important to pick up a couple of extra rounds that you might not have been expected to pick up and that last round by London was one of those 4-2 down this half 8-7 down overall but they still lead the franchise match by four three rounds to go including this one for Counter-Strike Source nothing doing so far for Stockholm they played this one very casually very carefully and Henry G you know what, he's been very, very aggressive with that Famous in hand. It's not an ideal weapon, but he picked up one entry frag. Sparkle and Ferris, though, clean him out. And Hud's G is gone as well. 2v3, Stockholm have the advantage. And they're looking to push the advantage home. Yorel now, in on Sparkle for 2v2. They get the bomb planted. Yorel goes huge again. Gifting is taken out. And now the advantage switches. Can Yorel close this round for London? He's trying to get in. Oh, he does! Wow. Fantastic from Yorel. 
three in a row and a defuse on the bomb and URL brings it back for the mid. Really well played, Tom. Excellent. And might just have got his team back into this game. It's eight all in Counter-Strike Source and London lead by five now in the franchise match. No, that was great by URL, uh, not only getting those three kills there, but London, they pushed forward in that round and, and they did get a couple kills from it, but they sort of shook up their defense a little bit. I was surprised they didn't keep pushing, but URL came in big there. Huge round from Tom Chenery, AKA URL. London set themselves again in the bomb site. Hutch G with the early kill on red. Henry G gets another one. Oh, wow. Hutch G back in. The G men are going big here for London mid. Three down, two to go. Henry G with another one. Gifting finally gets in, but he's last man standing. And Hutch G again. Five between the G men. And London now have the lead. Though they've got to hold on, they've got to protect that lead they've got because if Stockholm wins this one, we could go into overtime. Yeah, well, we will go into overtime in Counter Strike Source if Stockholm win this one, and it would give them another chance to put another point on the board as well. And London really don't want to do that, but red opens things up for Stockholm. They have the advantage now. Can they make it play? Oh, that's a fantastic grenade though oh, from mid, wow. but somehow Ferrison has come away from that and get the two frags and can now march on into the bomb site, get this bomb planted. And London now only have one more man remaining. It's Hutch G. It's not going to work for them. And we're tied up at 9 wow. 9 in Counter Strike Source. 5-4 on both halves for both teams. I guess you could call that an even game. Yeah, you could. And, of course, we saw so many great pistol kills from the London Mint this game. And, of course, now in overtime, things switch because where you normally start off with a maximum amount of money, now you start off with a minimal amount of money, and it will be a pistol battle here I, I have for to the say, final there's, there's round. One other interesting thing about this is that uh, three of the guys that you see in the London Mint used to play with Haz from the Stockholm Magnetic in the same team. Before they came to the CGS a year and a half ago, the thing is, those guys couldn't win a pistol round to save their lives back then. Uh -oh. So it'd be interesting to see how they go now in CGS overtime, which of course now is pistols only. It's time for London to win this one if they want their franchise match score to increase to six. It's 16 11 overall right now. Close matchup. And this is a, a double point, if you like. It's either going to be 16 12, four point lead, or it's going to be 17 11, six point lead. That's the difference this last round will make. We are underway in this final 19th round. It's not quite the 19th on the golf course, that's for sure. There's that. A 3 2 split over there from Stockholm right now, so they've really spread out across those two bomb sites. Three across towards A, checking two in B right now, and no push so far from Mint. URL now is making his way out the middle, whilst the four of them are pushing in towards the bomb site. This is a fantastic strat here from London Mint. They haven't lost a single man as they've made their way into the bomb site. Uh -oh. URL and Henry G go huge. They've both taken Deagles. Hudge G with another one as well, and Stockholm right now have a huge man of the wow. climb. It's made even bigger by Hudge G, who's gone massive for London Mint. Oh. And London Mint take the counter strike source. Yeah. Big scope right now. London Mint 17, Stockholm Magnetic 11. They're not out of it yet. And Dead or Alive is our next event. Live in the arena, it's Dead or Alive 4. For the London Mint, he's the trash talker who's about to take out the garbage. Avatar, Pataman, Pata. And for the Stockholm Magnetic, he may be just the Swede they need. Nicholas Stantamila Lagerboer. Man is competing as a Yane, a devious diva with a good distance game. A Yane is extremely evasive, capable of spinning like a top and then crushing her foe completely. Scat Mill is competing as Kokoro, a young geisha who can go from a string of attacks directly into a throw without stopping to catch her breath. London, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. Stockholm, are you ready? Ready, go. set, fight! Let's go. Well, we'll see if there's any of the trash talk that Panaman is we'll famous for. Can't say I actually agree with some of he said to Messi, but nevertheless, he is the showman. But Scanton Miller here has potentially the advantage. 
As we jump into the action here in round number one, Red Eye, pretty even until we uh, saw a nice launch there. It's going to put both players about 50%. Good throw from Padaman. Not going to do a ton of damage. Scatamilla will back off just a little bit. And you can see him going in. Padaman definitely using his character's unique ability to his advantage, using that uh, little twirl to sort of spin out of the way. And he will pick up round one. How does it feel to lose? You got this. He yeah, threw out yeah. just a little bit there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that was, that was pretty tame compared yeah. to it. Uh, it was pretty tame, <laughs> and rightfully so. Scott and Miller gave him, uh, you know, up. gave him a, a good round. He's so. We'll see here, Scatamilla goes in, uh, gets aggressive, one throw, a second throw. Oh, almost made it a third there, wasn't quick enough. He is gonna get his third right there. He's got Padaman in the danger zone and maybe we'll hear the quiet Scatamilla give us a little bit of talk. He wins his first round. You got this. You know you're better than this kid. You know you're better than this. You also noted there, Red Eye, that Scatamilla does use uh, you know, he uses a different type of controller than a lot of the other Absolutely. players here in DOA. Yep. Yeah, each to their own as well. We've seen in the past, Master was uh, obviously one of those men that used a stick controller. He's changed this year back to a normal controller, and look what it's done for him. Yeah, undefeated, so. Padaman getting a great combo there. Area Juggle gets the uh, wake up low kick as well. You see Scott and Miller try to go in for it. Padaman cannot finish the juggle there. If he would have finished that, it probably would have been a KO there. But he'll get a low punch to finish it anyway. That? How easy is that? Make it hard for me, come on. How easy is that? Two to one now in favor of London Keep Mint. Up, Keep it up, Scott Miller. You're doing great. Well, so far he's given Stockholm one round, looking to put many more together. Some great blocking there to start things off. Padman will get the launcher and the combo. Here on Seaside Market, you definitely want to watch out for all of the obstacles that will get in your way. Walls, dividers. Perfect. Another great job by Padman. Good counter, and, or excuse me, good throw by Scat and Miller. He'll back off just a little bit. You can see Padman definitely using his character's unique ability to his advantage. Evading away from Scott Miller. Scott Miller go, gets it there, gets the ground bound and the combo to finish it. Patience pays off. Oh, thank you. They say patience is a virtue. One that seemingly that man right there in yellow has. And a uh, great round from him. And the, you know, the other thing I wanted to say as well, Ayane is one of those characters that Panaman has used for a long time, right since DOA 4 came out. It's actually his preferred character, so he should be feeling comfortable right now. Scoreline suggests otherwise. Yeah, he almost uh, played a little bit better with Ryu in the UK Finals, but uh, he's doing his damage. He's got two rounds against a very worthy opponent, but Scott Miller has the advantage here in round number five. He's almost got Padman already down to danger. Great, great counter from Padman to stay alive in this one. See if he can bring it back. Goes in, blocked by Scott Miller, and he is punished. Scott Miller is now up three to two. He's nervous, I know that. He's nervous, Red, but he's winning rounds. Well, I don't think he is nervous. I think he's just very, very calm. And I think he's worked Padaman out here. Because if you notice, he's making a lot of throws and a lot of yeah. grabs right now. And he seems to be open to that. Padaman is not blocking those throws. And he's not picking up any on, on any of the grabs from Scanton Miller. Some nice uh, answers back by Padaman after Scat Miller basically ate away at 50% of Padaman's bar. Again, being patient, he even threw out a taunt there, which Padaman definitely noticed, <laughs> went in for the throw. Uh, maybe a little too cocky, I don't know, but he did have the health advantage. He only needs one more hit, but Padaman's going in for it. He gets the launcher. Maybe that taunt wasn't the smartest thing to do. Right here, right now. Give your fools a break. Perfect. So, very interesting. Right? Very interesting. You don't see many of these top players do that in a game. And uh, I, I don't know if you can really attribute that to losing the round in complete, but it was pretty close. It was close. I mean, as soon as the talk came out, Padaman saw it and went in for the kill. 
I, I'm going to have to go back and watch the replay, but <laughs> I, I think that that was a crucial mistake, and maybe that's exactly what Padaman wanted him to do. So let's get back to the action now as Catamilla is staying alive here. He does have Padaman down to the danger zone now. 37 seconds left on the clock, and an elbow to the midsection will win it for him. He's up four to three. Yeah, and potentially more importantly right now, he's put the game back in with a hunt here for Stockholm. They're five points back. 2015 is the scoreline in the franchise match right now. One more round for Stockholm would secure them the win in Dead or Alive Mail and would make the gap four and give their Forza a chance. A chance. Yeah, he does not want to give up any more rounds to Padaman. That could put the overall match in jeopardy. So we'll see if he can pull it out right here. Great counter by Padaman as Scott Miller pulls out the same attack three times in a row. It was bound to be countered there eventually. A nice counter once again. And now Scott Miller is in the danger zone and Padaman will pick up that round to tie it four to four. So. 21-15 overall, now they have a six-point advantage. Win this, Take it. Finish him it's now. game over. Stockholm relying on Skat and Mila to stay alive in this one. For the team, first combo and attack will go to Padaman. Skat and Mila now coming out, gets the throw as Padaman misses that low hit. Great blocking by Skat and Mila. And he punishes Padaman for that series of blocked attacks. Padaman coming right back though. Four hit combo. Comes in, gets two low hits, turns it into an aerial jungle, goes in very aggressive and wins it. Come on, come on! After four games, the score is going to be 22 to 15. Good win there by Padaman for the London Mint. You can see that we now have a seven point lead for London with Forza Motorsport 2 coming up next. When we come back, London's lifelong friends, Stoon and NT101, face the race of their lives against the Magnetics revamp driving duo, Bryce and Magnus. So stick around. It's the last round of this world qualifier, and Stockholm are heading home. But with national pride at stake, the Swedes aren't going to go without a fight. Welcome back to the Championship Gaming Series. The score is 22-15 to London, with one event left. Let's go to the track, Farouk. Live from the arena, it's Forza Motorsport 2 for the London Mint. This British racing duo makes their opponents drive on the wrong side of the road. Nick, NT101 Townsend, and Steven, Spoon Embling. And for the Stockholm Magnetic, it's the squad that catches more cars than a speed trap. Fabian, Bryce Clement, and Tomas Madness Torcel. Forza Motorsport 2 is a premier racing game where drivers jockey for position at blistering speeds through a variety of courses around the globe. In the Championship Gaming Series, every match is a four-car race between two drivers from each team. Team strategy is key. The drivers win four points for first place, two points for second, and one point for third. Let's take a look at the car colours these drivers will be racing in. NT101 in the black vehicle, Stoon in the green, Bryce in the light blue, and Madness in yellow for Stockholm. London, are you ready? Yeah. Stockholm, are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Off we go then, in Forza Motorsport 2. Still plenty of pride at stake here, as the, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's two men off the start line, <laughs> actually stuck together, and, uh, well, I don't know if that's trading paint so much as trading some glue, but neither of them are able to get away. And uh, if they don't get away fairly soon, we might even see them lapped in this race. Terrible, terrible stuff at the start between those two. I think it was Madness and Stune who came together. And Madness was the one who actually got out of that. Yeah, that was a uh, sticky situation if I've seen one before. <laughs> NT101 then out front right now in the black TVR. Bryce in second place. Didn't have the best of Euro finals against 
Berlin finishing that distant fourth in the end. He was double teamed halfway around that second lap, and this time round, he's driving a lot more solidly. He's in second place right now. Man, this is up to third. Stewart in fourth. Oh. There comes the hit, though. And nice. Price is going to manage to get out of that one, and NT101 loses out in the smack down at the second hairpin as they'll come down to this first corner. There we are on screen right now with Bryce leading the dark car behind his NT101. The smack that you might have just heard is again Madness and Stune battling together once more. And there they are on screen. <laughs> and uh, well, they're, they're doing like five miles an hour around there because they don't want to give each other the advantage going into the next corner. So it's a bit of a cat and mouse sticky situation and nothing more than that. They still carry on and they still can't get past each other like a couple of turtles, DJ Wee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they, I, I'm sorry, it's it's very comical. These guys are just basic, they want, they're, they're fighting so hard for that one point in third place position. And, uh, and sorry to interrupt you, but we've got another attack on the lead there. NT101 moves ahead of Bryce, down in that second hairpin yet again, again. That was the point that Bryce took him out on the previous lap. This time round, he decides to let him go. We're on lap two of three, they're coming through the end this lap as, Ooh. well, NT101 took avoiding action there, going into that final turn, and actually has come out of that uh, just ahead of his opponent. So well done to NT101 for anticipating that one. And he's now broken away into the lead. He comes down into turn one. This is the final lap. NT101 leads. Bryce in second. Stu now up to third and Madness down in fourth. Switching back to check behind them right now as Stune comes through in third place. He seems to have broken away from Madness too as we rejoin the leader. NT101 coming down towards the last few corners of the race. Madness still going for a big takeout behind. Wasn't able to complete it though. And NT101 now into the second last hairpin. One more double apex hairpin to come. Bryce up behind him in second place. Stoon in third. And this one looks like giving London a clean sweep. Through to the final turn comes NT101. And he's going to crown a brilliant victory for London men. Oh. Not only winning the Forza, but they've clean sweep the entire board. Come on, come on. Stoon coming through in third as well. And that tops off a mighty victory. And to confirm the finishing order is as follows. NT101 wins the race. Bryce in second, Stoon in third, and Madness in fourth. Let's check out our final scoreboard of this matchup. London Mint 27, Stockholm Magnetic 17, and London Mint has turned in a well-oiled performance. Emma. Cheers, Red Eye. The London Mint are back from the dead. Woo! They are now in the running for the last open spot in the world final. They won't be the heavy favourites, but they did show remarkable skill, strength, and courage like lions. Rawr. Will it be enough to take them all the way? Anything is possible, and there have been no shortage of upsets in this league. We'll see you soon on the Championship Gaming Series. Next time promises to be huge as the Birmingham Salvo and Berlin Alliance go at it for regional supremacy, the coveted European trophy, and top seeding in the Championship Gaming Series World Final. With that much on the line, you can't miss it. We'll see you then. And if you love a good slog to the finish line, make sure you're watching Bruce Willis as he gives it his all in Die Hard 4 over on Sky Movies Premiere, also in HD, Saturday night at 8. Come on! Come on! Awesome! Awesome!